Bradbird has had over a decade to come up with a storyline for his sequel. And I think that many of us came to terms with having to wait so long for said sequel because we felt that Brad Bird was really working on it. Like, give him time, guys. He's going to come up with something incredible, and that can't just happen overnight or even after a decade. But it would seem that his big idea is just flipping it around where Mrs. Incredible gets suckered in by a big flashy enterprise that appeals to her ego. I mean, it doesn't make Mr. and Mrs. Incredible look so good that they fall for the same thing twice, right? And you know what this actually reminds me of a little bit? Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi. Because sure, Brad Bird's in the creative driver's seat here and he even has ownership because he created The Incredibles. And so you might be like, well, who are we to criticize where he wants to take the story, right? But here's the thing, the game has changed, right? Not only has the genre changed, but the game of movie making and interacting with fans itself has changed. And you gotta be able to keep up with us, right? And I think that pretty much anyone could come up with a better storyline than gender flipping. Although I will say that it is kind of clever that it gender flips across the board, not just in terms of the storyline, but we're talking about career and also family life. But I have to say, I think everyone's really sick of this conversation. I feel we've already had this conversation. We've moved on to new conversations. So why do we want to go backwards, right? I feel, you know, Brad Bird, I think draws from his own, you know, personal experiences for this. So maybe he's just, you know, maybe Brad Bird's like a little out of step with what, you know, maybe he's fallen out of step with society, you know? Uh, I would have, thought maybe someone would have pointed that out to him. They'd be like, I'm glad you're having a really interesting personal family situation right now, Brad, and you're learning so much about gender roles and family and stuff, but we already did that. So you're gonna have to keep it to yourself, man. Uh, but I, okay, let's dive in and let's just have faith that Brad Bird will pleasantly surprise us with the actual film, right? You know, it's just, maybe it's just not off to a good start. All right, so let's, let's take a closer look. There's the Disney logo. I love it so much, it makes me so happy. All right. I love that they invoke the theme parks. So we're literally picking up where we left off. They told us that, and it feels very much like it, but this was right annoying right away. So I totally understand why Violet and Dash are standing here being like, even Jack-Jack, look, even Jack-Jack's like, what the hell, man? Being like, I can't believe that you're leaving us behind to go and fight the Underminer, because the last frame of the movie, the, la the first movie, was, okay, we're finally gonna work together as a team, you know, a family of supers. And they just throw it out the window right away. I mean, this is something that Hollywood does all the time. I don't know why, because nobody likes it, but when they have a sequel or a third or fourth film in a franchise, they'll undo the progress that was been, that was been made because they're like, well, this is what worked the first time, so let's just redo it. And it's, it's formulaic. And Pixar and Brad Bird are supposed to not be formulaic. Although I have been saying that Pixar has been formulaic for quite some time now. I thought that maybe they dropped that bad habit with Coco, but it would seem that's not the case. So this is just very disappointing to me. Hugely, I'm as sad as this, these kids as many of you are saying, who look to be benched yet again. So I'm like, whatever, two stupid parents, go off there. You guys are selfish. The animation has changed quite a bit, by the way. It's, you know, it's subtle, but once you start to pick up on it, you know what it reminds me of? The way the animation in the Batman, the animated series changed. It's just so much, so much sharper and more angular. And I have to say, a little bit colder. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I think that egg roll, has more warmth than the, than the Parr family. Those egg rolls look fantastic. Uh, so they're, they're having a an, an dinner. As you can see, no one has time to cook, right? Uh, it's only gonna get worse. Oh, they, look, they've moved somewhere. Oh, you can see moving boxes in the background there. I like this kind of like 60s technology. You know, I like this um, timelessness uh, of this universe. You know, Brad Bird really likes um, the 50s and 60s, which of course is like the Disney time time period, you know, classic Disney. And so it's, it's a great fit with uh, not only this material, but with this company. So she's like, supers are illegal. Jack Jack some some gibberish. Now I like the dash says, you know, I have to fight justice. It's my, like my way or something. I hope he's into comic books. That would be wonderful that it's inspiring him. I think that would be great. Uh, but these, oh, and by the way, that's a different voice for dash, but they did a fab, it's hard. You would think it would be hard to match 
kid voices. You know, like adult voice actors are supposed to be able to mimic other, you know, it's the, it's the gig. You know, they have to, for instance, speaking of Disney, they have to, they have had multiple Mickey Mouses at this point and they're all very good. But for, for child actors to be able to match, that's impressive. So he sounds exactly like Dash. Um, but the kids seem, you know, exactly the same, also in bad ways. So Mr. Incredible, he's also out of touch like Brad Bird. Not so funny when it affects the movie. So here you go. I don't know why it hasn't occurred to anyone, although Mrs. Incredible, her eye makeup and that nice black sweater. I am a fan of black myself. She looks very nice. Uh, and I also like Frozone's jacket. We'll talk more about the Frozone family in a little bit later in this trailer. Uh, but they're having a late night rendezvous, and I can't believe that it hasn't occurred to any of them, all, even off the bat, that this is not good. So he's like, oh, someone reached out to me. It's on. We keep falling for this. So there's the dev tech, uh, you know, it's a little like Black Widow, the motorcycle's going up into the plane. Uh, there you can see uh, Bob Odenkirk's character, but I wonder if that's his sister with them too. Interesting. All right. So he looks great. He lo this is a very interesting, like, look at those cheekbones. You, you could get cut on them. Uh, I also like the way at the bottom of his shoes, men's dress shoes. A, good, a nice men's suit and dress shoes are pretty nice. Uh, and he is very finely dressed. Uh, I also like that he's playing with, uh, what is that, a little basketball? Yeah, that's great. That's funny. And Bob Odenkirk's going to kill this. And look at this crazy Mad Men technology. He doesn't even have a computer on his desk. Not even like a 1960s one. So they should be suspicious of him right there. He's like, but I want Elastigirl. And they, that's cut, I think, to make him look like, oh, I'm so sad about it. So she's going to drive off, all right? So they've changed her uniform. It's like the old Elastigirl one, but it's been made a little bit more sophisticated and timely, right? They've swapped out the hot pink besides the belt for uh, black on the gloves and the boots. I think it has actually a little more sex appeal. It's the sexiest outfit we've seen with Mrs. Incredible and or Elastigirl, sorry. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. It looks She looks a little bit like she's a dance mom, right? Like she's going to do like jazz hands when she gets out there. It has a little bit of that look to it. Uh, so she's like, don't wait up. I'm like, barf. So she goes out of a wall of water, just like there was a firewall in the first movie. They're even copying the elemental walls. I'm like, come on. So I guess that's their house. It's a pretty nice house if that's the case. They're like, serious upgrade. You know, maybe that's what they moved to. Maybe this new gig comes with a nice house. So that would be pretty cool. But, you know, prison is a prison, right? That's how the rest of her family feels. Look at the animation on this book. Look at that. Look at the way the edges are messed up. I love how cozy it is. I'm like, ooh, that's nice. Uh, but I like, you know, obviously it's a used school book passed down through the classes. I and mean, that's so great. Those are awesome unless someone doodles all over them. Then you're like, this is garbage. I don't want this. But this looks like a very cozy book. So Dash needs help with his homework. Look at Dash's hair in the back there. I like how he's growing it out a little bit. He looks amazing. Super sharp, super heightened. I love it. Look at the ring also on Mr. Incredible. It looks real. So Mr. Incredible apparently knows only old school math. I don't know any math, so I'd be like, whatever. You're going to have to, I can't help you with this. Although some of you said you did relate to this, so I think that's nice. I, I'm glad, that, I know, you know, I think parenting is very important, but I think, uh, I think that it's everybody should have, I think what's really important in my opinion is that, you know, parents support each other and I don't think that, it's a really complex conversation, but I don't think that it should be made to seem like some, a parent has to be benched, right? Um, and I don't see why, you know, a, a team should take turns and then everybody can do everything, especially when you have a family business. All right, so anyway, this is adorable. Uh, I like the, the wallpaper. I think that's really cute. Jack-Jack is really paying attention to this book. He's very interested in doozles and do, uh, d uh, doozing, but Mr. Incredible is not. He looks actually pretty sharp, you know, not only in terms of the animation, but he's looking better. I mean, he's really aging into his look. He looks fantastic. He looks a little Superman-y, too. I like, I know he's supposed to maybe be exhausted, but this little blonde curl on the top of Mr. Incredible's hair is pretty nice. So, he's, you know, just can't stay awake. And I love the way I was get. I was getting bored myself here, by the way, when I watched the trailer. Also, the wrinkles on that shirt are just stunning. I love the way he slaps his face. I thought that was just great. But yeah, that wrinkles. I can't believe the wrinkles on this shirt. That is amazing animation. Wow. Although, there should be so much exciting stuff happening that, you know, I don't notice the wrinkles in the shirt. Uh, and then we cut here to Helen in her hotel room. She's got room service and she ate the whole thing because she's by herself. <laughs> Every woman knows what I'm talking about there. 
Uh, you can see the little room service menu there on, on the um, on the bed. She's got still got her little uh, you know drink there next door, and she's like, "Oh, thanks, honey." And he's like, "Whatever. Have a great time on the business trip. Business trips are awesome. Everyone should get to take them." So look, this is from the beginning of the movie. So I guess with the underminer, you can see that's the drill. And it's classic uh, superhero situation. Knocked a train off course. And you can see Mr. Incredible there on top of it. And Mrs. Incredible is with him. And so that's uh, her old look. I like that look a little bit better. I just think it looks better. So she's uh, in, getting into action there. She's like, let me see if I can do this better than Spider-Man. Now here, so love seeing more Frozone. He's fantastic. Samuel L. Jackson does a great job voicing him. But where the heck is Mrs. Frozone? She made such an impression in the first film with the super suit conversation. I would really love to see her here, particularly because there's, you know, Black Panther, I think, has done a great job to, you know, co you know make up some ground here. But, and I see this from a number of you in the comments all the time, representation for women of color in movies is the lowest, right? For all the talk that's out there, that's a group that really needs representation. So why not have this wonderful character mix in? I guess she's not, I mean, she knows her husband's a superhero because she cleans a super suit. So I don't see why she can't be a part of it. And I, I hope maybe that she'll be a nice surprise. So clearly everybody in the family except Mrs. Incredible because she's Elastigirl because she's out doing work uh, has to take care of Jack-Jack. And I like that this is a reveal. Now look at this. Okay, I'm very happy for you, Brad Bird, that you gave Mrs. Incredible, aka Elastigirl, a realistic rear end. And that it was a great sense of pride for you in the first movie and it led to a good joke, right? However, Cut it with the butt shots. This is, you know, I almost feel like that motorcycle is angled for premium butt shots. And this is like an animated family movie. So every time she gets on that thing, I feel like the camera placement could be a little bit better. But anyway, here she goes. Now look at that. She looks great there. That looks so Batman the Animated Series, you know, last generation of uh, animation style. It looks really good. And also look at the texture on the suit she's wearing. That's very cool. Uh, so she's, look at also that with a knit on the sweater. It's driving me, these textures are the most exciting thing about this trailer. So she, uh, I also like her casual wave. Super cool, Elastigirl. It got me to call her by her proper name. So look at that. I love it. I, lo I love the what the, that's my favorite reaction. And there's Mr. Incredible giving, bribing Jack-Jack with cookies. As a huge fan of cookies myself, I'd be like, I think that'll work. And he's like, I can't just keep giving him cookies. And I'd be like, yeah, I know it's not particularly healthy. Uh, but doesn't he like something else? You know, it's a bad, it's a bad lesson to, to give someone food as a reward. Maybe he likes a toy or a sticker or something else, you know, to, as a prize, right? Uh, but I don't think Mr. Incredible is really able to think clearly at the moment. He's having a really little bit of a rough time. And so is Jack-Jack. I, I don't know why he has this power to turn into a little demon. It does not fit. Uh, I, get, I think it really is just Brad Bird being like, it's the terrible twos, get it? Little kids are like little demons. And I'm like, yeah, but it has to work with the power set. The whole, anyone who reads comic books knows that a big part of the fun of superpowers is understanding the rules for them and then, and then figuring out how to apply them to a situation. It's a lot of fun. And so when you start having them just come out of nowhere, it, it, it makes you have to watch it more passively so it's not as engaging. They got a lot of crazy modern art in this movie on the background there. So good thing his dad's invulnerable because he's biting the heck out of him. Now this is great. Edna Mode's uh, kimono is stunning. And look at the artwork in her home. It's just really gorgeous. And so this is, she's talking and she says, being a parent can be heroic. And there you can see, it, it can be heroic. Look at that. That's really cool. I like the fire. I like when he's elemental. I like the fire and I like the lightning. I don't know where the green eye, laser eye beams come from, but you know, Mr. Incredible's reflexes are improving. He didn't get his hair cut off this time, so good for him. Uh, and she said it can be heroic if done properly. And she's like stressing on properly in her perfect Edna Mode way. I'd be like, oh really? You wanna take over for a while, Edna, since you seem to think it's so easy? That's what I would say to her. And I, I, I bet she would, she'd be a fabulous, but she'd be like Auntie Mame, it would be amazing. Uh, that would be a great sequence in the movie. Uh, but I just don't like this idea. You know, Mr. Incredible was like one of the greatest superheroes to ever live. And while I think it's wonderful that he wants to be with his kids and help raise them and be a part of them, you know, I don't think, I just don't know how I feel about him having, especially because it's not something, a choice that he seems to want to make. I mean, it seems like he's going to get talked into it. I just don't, I just don't feel, it feels right. 
You know, everyone's talking him into it. I'm like, again, I'd be like, well, if you feel that way, you do it. Although Jack-Jack is adorable. Look at him. Put, take him to work. This is the perfect take your kids to work situation because they can contribute. Give him a little, he has a little baby super suit. We've already seen it. He's so cute. So it's, 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 it's a little tired. It's a little cliche. Um, but I'm hoping that, again, they're saving the best stuff for the movie. So what do you think? What do you think about how they're treating the characters? What do you think about benching uh, the kids yet again? What do you think about No Mrs. Frozone? Uh, what do you think of the gender swapping situation across the board? Uh, and would you trust Edna Mode with your kids? All right, write your thoughts down below. Thank you for going over this with me. And you can check out some more videos right now. Okay.